everyone and welcome to another video with me, Miss Martins. Today we're going to go over solving, solving algebraic equations, still algebra. If you've missed my other videos on simplifying and factorizing, click the links in the description above, in, in the video above or in the description below. Let's jump into solving. Now remember, you will solve if you see an equal sign. If you are given an equation, so that means you see an equal sign, and they say solve for x or solve for a or solve for y or get the value of x or whatever, then you know you are solving. You're finding the value for that variable that makes that equation true. Our goal is to get the variable alone and we're going to get an answer like x equals something. To solve, we do inverse operations. So here's an example of a few equations that we're going to go over in this video. They're all from past exam papers. So let's jump right in. But before we do that, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Let's do some exam questions. Right. So immediately we can see that this is an equation. We're going to have to solve for a. My variable is a. So it says solve for x. It should say solve for a. But we have brackets. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is to get rid of those brackets by distributing into the brackets. So 2 multiplied by a and 2 multiplied by negative 6. Another nice thing to do when solving is to keep your equal signs underneath one another. Please don't do that weird thing where people put double equal signs. Don't do that. We don't do that. We have one equal sign in an equation. So we keep the equal signs underneath each other like that. But let's distribute. 2 times a is 2a. 2 times the negative 6 is negative 12. Then on this side, we got negative a minus 13. Now what we're going to have to do is get the a's to one side and the non-a's or the things that are not variables to the other side. So I'm going to get the a's to the left-hand side. 2a is already on the left-hand side, so I'm going to leave it there, 2a. Then I'm going to take this negative a over and it's going to become positive a. Basically, what we do when we solve equations is we do what we call inverse operations. So to get rid of the negative a, a minus a, we add a. The opposite of minus is plus. If we add a to the side of the equation, it gets rid of the a. Because we added it to the right-hand side, we have to add it to the left-hand side, which is why the a is now over here. So that is what we are doing. With the non-variables, over here we've got negative 13, I'm leaving it on the right-hand side, and over here I've got negative 12. If I want to get rid of a negative, negative 12, the opposite of minus 12 is plus 12. If I plus 12 on this side of the equation, it's going to get rid of it. If I do plus 12 on this side, I have to do plus 12 on this side. So that is what we are doing. In the future, I'm not going to say add 12 to both sides or add a to both sides. I'm just going to say take the 12 over and take the a over. That's how I'm going to phrase it. But please just keep in the back of your mind what it really means. So if we add to the one side of the equation, we must add to the other. If we minus from the one side, we must minus from the other. Okay, from all terms on both sides. And if I want to get rid of a negative, I do the opposite of minus or subtract, which is add. If I want to get rid of a multiply by 2, I divide by 2. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so I've got 2a plus a, that is 3a. I've got negative 13 plus 12, that is negative 1. Then my last step, I've got multiply by 3 on this side. I want to get rid of the 3. What's the opposite of times 3? divide by 3. That's why the 3 goes at the bottom. Another way, another nice way to remember it is the number next to the variable always goes to the bottom. It doesn't matter if we put the minus on the top or in the middle, it means the same thing. So the number next to the variable always goes to the bottom. That's a great way that I used to remember it. Okay, opposite of times 3 is divide by 3. Now in 1.2, I have fractions. Now, as soon as you see equations with fractions, your first step is to make them all into a fraction. So we can't deal with only these two being fractions. This two over here also has to be written as a fraction. So I'm going to put it over one. So first, make sure everything is written as a fraction. And another thing that I like to do is I like to put the numerators like this in, in, a, in brackets, sorry, the numerators in brackets. Then what we're going to do is because we're dealing with fractions, we're going to get them over the same lowest common denominator. 
When you see fractions, we know lowest common denominator. So we've got four, and we've got five, and we've got one. The lowest common denominator, so the smallest number that four and five and one can divide into without a remainder, is 20. So I'm going to rewrite all the fractions over 20. Over 20, over 20. How do I do that? Well, how do I get 4 to become 20? You multiply it by 5. What you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Now it should sort of make sense why I put brackets around the numerator. I'm multiplying the bracket by 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 5 in front of the brackets. Okay, you're multiplying the bracket by 5. You're going to end up multiplying both of these terms by 5. Then we multiply the 5 by 4. So I have to multiply the top by 4. I'm multiplying the bracket by 4, so I'm going to put the 4 in front of the brackets. Again, we're going to end up multiplying the x and the 1 by 4. You can't forget about the 2 over here, though. That's why we have to write it as a fraction. We multiply 1 by 20 to get it over 20. What you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So 2 times 20 is 40. Once they're all over the same lowest common denominator, and because I'm solving, and only because I'm solving, I can get rid of the denominators. And again, the reason why I can do that is because this means divide by 20. What's the opposite of divide by 20? Times by 20. If I times by 20, we know the 20s cancel. Okay? Okay. If I times this by 20, I have to times this one by 20, and I have to times this one by 20. The 20s will all end up cancelling. That's why, just to keep it simple, how I explain it is I say, if you get it over the same lowest common denominator, once they're all over the same one, you can get rid of it. So what I'm left with is 5, 2x minus 3, 4, multiplied by x plus 1, plus 40. Now I hope you can see that we have to distribute this into the brackets. 5 times 2x is 10x. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 1 is plus 4. Then we carry down the plus 40. Then I'm going to get all the x's to one side. So the 10x was already there. That positive 4x I'm going to take over and it's going to become negative 4x. On this side, the positive 4 and the positive 40 are going to stay there. The negative 15 is going to go over and it's going to become positive 15. Then I add my like terms. 10x minus, 6, minus 4x is 6x. And 4 plus 40 plus 15 is 59. I'm still not done with the sum. My last step is I need to get x alone. At the moment, it is being multiplied by 6. The opposite of times 6 is divide by 6. And that is the simplest version of that fraction. My next question is 3 to the power of x minus 1 equals 9. Now, when the x is in the exponent, so you can see little x up here, it's part of the exponent. My rules are get the basis the same. Get the bases the same, and when the bases are the same, we can drop the base, okay? So get the bases the same, and when they're the same, we can drop the base. Now, what I mean by that is this is 3 to the power of x minus 1. I need to make 9 have the same base as this. So you have to think to yourself, 3 to the power of what gives me 9? 3 to the power of 2 gives me 9. We can also use our calculator to help us. You type 9 equals shift fact 9 equals shift fact and then it gives me 3 to the power of 2 now that the bases are the same i hope this makes sense this 9 is the same as saying 3 to the power of 2 i haven't changed anything the equation's still the same then once the bases are the same because that's done we're going to drop the bases so goodbye goodbye what we're left with over here is x minus 1 what we're left over here is 2 and then my last step, the negative 1, subtract by 1. I take over and it becomes 2 plus 1, which is 3. And there we go. 
ah, this example is an interesting one. And a lot of my students look at this and they say, okay, cool. Um, Ma'am says that when we solve for equations, we get the x's to the one side. And then I'm going to take the 12 over and it's going to become 0 minus 12, which is negative 12. And then they stop and they look at it and they're like, uh, I don't know what to do because x squared minus 7x, those aren't like terms. I can't subtract them. And then they get stuck. So my rule, my thing to look out for when you see this is if you see an equation with an x squared and there's no other x squared to cancel it out. So there's no negative x squared to cancel the x squares out. And if the equation is equal to zero, you do the following. We're going to factorize the equation. Okay, we're going to do trinomials over here. Then we're going to get two brackets. And when you have two brackets and that's equal to zero, your next step is to take each bracket and make it equal to zero. I will do a whole video on this if you want to see more. This is difficult, this type of solving. But for now, for exam practice, I don't have a video yet, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the expression. We're going to say, okay, can't take the x's to one side and the non-x's to the other. So what are we going to have to do is we're going to have to factorize. So to keep it simple, if we see x squares, if we see x squares and we can't get rid of the x squares, we need to factorize. We can't do highest common factor. We can't do difference of two squares. It has to be a trinomial. Now I'm going to do the trinomial pretty quick. If you need help with trinomials, you need to go watch my other videos on exam practice for factorizing or my factorizing videos. So 12 is either 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. I know I need to make a negative 7, so I'm going to go with 3 times 4. I know in order to make a negative 7, I need a negative 4 minus 3. So this is going to be x minus 4, x minus 3. Now do you see that I have two brackets multiplied by each other, and that equals zero. Now my next step, if you see a equation that looks like that, immediately your next step is to take that bracket and make it equal to zero. And then you take the other brackets and you make it equal to zero. You put it all in between. X minus four equals zero. So X must be four you take the negative 4 over. Or x minus 3 equals 0. So x must be, you take the negative 3 over, it becomes x equals 3. Now this should sort of make sense to you. If I take 4 and I put it in the place of x, look what happens. 4 minus 4 is 0. If I put the 4 here, 4 minus 3 is negative 1. But it doesn't matter because anything multiplied by 0 gives me zero. And if you try that with our other option, you get the same outcome. So if you take three, if you put three in the place of x, instead of putting four in the place of x. So let's erase that. Let me show you. So in the place of x, if I put three, if I put three there, and I put three there, three minus four is negative one. And 3 minus 3 is 0. And anything multiplied by 0 gets me 0. So this equation has two solutions. And you must include both. So I know that it says or in between. That is just a notation. It's just the way we write it. But you have to include both. So when you see an x squared and when you see the equation equal to 0, you must factorize. I did a trinomial, it gave me two brackets equal to zero. You take each bracket and you make it equal to zero and you solve. Take the next bracket, make it equal to zero and you solve. You must put it all in between and both options need to be there for you to get your marks. So this was another exam question that I adapted. And here you can see we already have two brackets equal to zero. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say x plus two equals zero or x minus 6 equals 0. Then you need to solve. x plus 2 equals 0, so x must be negative 2. You take the plus 2 over. Or x minus 6 equals 0. You take the negative 6 over and it becomes positive 6. And that's your answer. For this one, there's two ways to do this. The way that you learned in grade 8 is possibly like this, 
We've got x squared, we've got 36. The inverse of square is square root. So remember when we're solving, we always do the inverse operations. So if I square root x squared, that ends up canceling out the square. So the square root cancels out with the square. And then if I square root 36, I'm left with 6. But you have to say plus minus 6. Now, people get confused about this. They say, but ma'am, why is it not just 6? Well, x can be 6. If x is 6, we've got 6 squared. 6 times 6 is 36. So positive 6 works. But x can also be negative 6. Negative 6 squared, negative 6 times negative 6 is also positive 36. So x can be a positive or negative, and that's because it's squared. It's because that's an even exponent. So if you do it this way, your answer must have a plus minus in order for you to get both marks. The other way to do this is kind of like that um, the type of equation I just showed you. When you see an x squared that you can't get rid of, you can make the equation equal zero. So how you do that is you bring the 36 over and it becomes minus 36. Now the equation is equal to zero. And remember that one of the examples we just did, I said, if you have x squared and your equation is equal to zero, we can factorize to get two brackets. Now, how would you factorize this expression over here? Can't do highest common factor. You would do difference of two squares, dots. So it would be plus minus x and x. The square root of 36 is it's 6 and 6. Because remember, 6 times 6 is 36. And then you take each bracket and you make it equal to 0. And you put it all in between. So we have x can be negative 6 or x can be positive 6. Do you see we get the exact same answer as when we square rooted both sides? Because remember, when we square root both sides, we have to put the plus minus 6. So plus 6 minus 6, plus 6 minus 6. If you'd like to see more solving exam questions or any of the other algebra questions above, let me know. Don't forget to check out the description to see my other algebra exam practice videos. I'll see you in a video soon, guys. Bye!